podcast. It's Andrea Gribble. Super excited to have Tanisha Hearn joining us from Seguin ISD. They have about 7,000 students, um, really just a two-person operation there with her director and then her role as a communication specialist. Today, Tanisha is going to talk about how they manage social media and celebrate all of the glorious things happening in their 13 different school buildings. Um, they have a lot going on. You're going to want to check out their social media channels. Um, I don't really know when Tanisha sleeps, considering she's also going for her doc, uh, doctoral um, certificate in strategic communications. So um, it's amazing. She knows a lot and she's going to dish it out. Um, she's going to really talk about how she's used communication and social media to really shift the culture and focus on the positive. She's going to give a lot of different ideas of what she features, not only in the classroom, but at the next level, you know, your alumni and getting those stories. Um, she's gonna tell you what kind of t-shirt she wants, which her t-shirt is gonna say tag the district because that's what she's telling everybody. They've got a lot of storytellers in their schools. If they tag the district, it makes it easier for her to find those stories. Um, she's gonna share a couple really helpful tools and be honest with her biggest struggle. Tanisha's also uh, a proud member and very active member in our membership group. Um, if you love the tips and tricks and strategies that we share for free each week on this podcast, if you love digging into our newsletter and our blog, I'm telling you, you would love our membership program. Um, for one low price, you can have up to three people from your district participate in weekly trainings and daily inspiration. We're talking Canva templates, we're talking um, hundreds of recorded trainings to help you elevate your storytelling. You deserve this. Your school district deserves it. Check it out. The link is in the show notes today or just head over to socialschoolforedu.com. Membership is now open. You will not regret this decision. All right, let's get to this week's K-12 PR tip. All right, this simple K-12 PR tip, which if you're listening to this live, it is, it is Halloween. Um, and we're all about uh, treats, not tricks. Uh, but this week's K-12 PR tip is about Instagram. Instagram continues to make a lot of changes. Um, they recently uh, rolled out 60 second stories, which means you don't have to have a break every 15 seconds if you upload or share a video. Um, but the real tip that I wanted to share that many of you might not realize is that on your grid, so where all of your posts are shown, where it's three across, you now have the ability to pin up to three of your Instagram posts to the top of the page. Um, you can just go to a post that you've already shared. You hit the three dots right there on your phone, and then you can tap to pin it to the top. Um, you're only going to be allowed to pin up to three of them up there. Um, and so then it's, then it's going to uh, displace one of those. Um, but what you want to think about um, in regards to putting up in those pin spots are, you know, important events, um, you know, something real significant. Uh, maybe it was homecoming and you had some really great uh, photos uh, from that event. Um, maybe you have a kindergarten uh, event coming up and you want to make sure that uh, your followers see that. Now, not everybody visits your page to scroll through your grid, uh, but those that do, it's a nice way to kind of highlight some of the stories or the images that you really want to attract people's attention to. Um, so again, you don't have to use this uh, you know, tip, uh, but it is there for you. So up to three of your Instagram posts can now be pinned to the very top of your page. You've seen some folks do some really cool things too, where they can make three images look like one image, obviously. You could do that here and you could keep that uh, right at the top uh, for people to view later on. So I hope this tip helps. You're gonna get a lot of tips in this episode with Tanisha Hearn. So let's get started. Tanisha Hearn is in the house. Welcome, Tanisha. Thank you. I'm so excited Thanks. to have you here. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, you are the communication specialist for Seguin ISD in Texas. We've gotten to get together a couple times in person, and I'm really excited for our listeners to meet you and learn all about the cool stuff you're doing there. 
Um, but why don't you just kind of, you know, share your background and a little bit into your role there. Uh, with sure. My uh, background, I'm I started out as a graphic artist. I worked for um, Fort Bend ISD in Houston, Texas for about 12 years. And I was the video and graphic specialist then when we still had to do some of the graphics by hand. So I'm I'm an old school PR person. And um, in Seguin ISD, I am the communication specialist. So I do, I'm responsible for all the social media for the district and to monitor all 13 schools um, I'm kind of the creative everything I do, video, editing, uh, animation, the whole bit and other duties, that's that's me. Awesome. So you have a communications director. Yes. And then yes. you, and then is there anybody else on your team? That's it. We're a two person shop. We, uh, we have an assistant that keeps us in line and handles all our paperwork and stuff for us. But for the most part, that's it. There's two of us. Okay, and I keep saying Seguin because that's kind of how it's per or it's spelled out, but it's Seguin. Right, you didn't say sequin. Most people say sequin, but it's Seguin. Yeah, it's Seguin. Seguin. Okay, I love it. And how big is your school district? Like, how many students? Uh, we have a little over seven thousand students. We have one high school. Um, you know, that's that's pretty popular uh, because it's it's historical. You know, if you lived in Seguin and grew up in Seguin, your parents went to Seguin High School, and sometimes your grandparents. So it's you know, it's a pride thing in our area. Yeah, awesome. Okay, um, so you do a lot of a lot of things for for the district. So, can you just kind of talk to me about how social media fits into your role and what channels you're responsible for and and all of that? So, our district has a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we've recently started a TikTok, and uh, you know, that's taken off pretty good with the kids and the Snapchat. Um, but it's more the Snapchat and, and uh, is more for like, you know, athletics, because uh, like I said, we have one high school. So it's kind of athletics is a big thing in Texas. Right. Sure. But um, I monitor those channels and the channels for all the schools and social media is a little different for us because we're such a small community. We support the schools, but there's a lot of community support as well. So if there's something that goes on in our community and it has to do with children and they want to get the message out, then we, we support that because we have a lot of community support from the organizations and groups in our small town. Okay, awesome. So you have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You started TikTok. Do you, do you create most of those videos for TikTok or are you getting help from some of the students? I create all the videos for TikTok, but uh, every once in a while I'll get a request from a student and we'll go out and our, our superintendent's real good at participating in those. So it's fun okay. for our convocation this year. We, our uh, superintendent was dancing and we caught some of that on video and it just went huge. Everybody loves it because he was dancing around with some of the staff. So it's it's really cool that he participates in all the things that we do. That is great. Um, okay, so you celebrate kind of all of your 13 schools on your district channels. Yes. And then you have school specific pages at each of the 13 sites too? Yes, each of our schools has a specific page and we have a like a campus liaison at each campus, the principal, and then a liaison that'll, you know, kind of keep those pages up. When they slow down, we kind of help them out and remind them, hey, you guys don't forget to post on social media, but they, you know, we, we ask them to celebrate the kids on their campus and the staff on their campus and what they're doing. And when we have amazing posts on those campuses, we for sure pull them off and put them on the district page as well so that the rest of the community can see what they're doing on their campuses. Okay. And are they mainly doing Facebook pages or some of them doing Instagram or what, what are they doing? We're, the elementary schools have Facebook and Twitter. Okay. And then our um, secondary schools have added Instagram. So they're working on Instagram too. Okay. So, and then they still have the Facebook and Twitter as well. Yes. Yes. All right. I'm making notes for my, for my, uh, show notes that people can uh, reference. So I like this. Um, when we were talking and, and you're part of our membership group and so I've gotten to know you, I've gotten to see you at Tistra and you actually came up into Wisconsin for one of our membership retreats and uh, you yeah, got, to it was enjoy, great. got to enjoy the outdoor weather in June instead of being indoors when you're back in Texas, right? 
I did. I even took a nap outside, which was great. You can't do that in Texas in the summertime. No, you can't. Well, just like you can't nap outside in the wintertime up here, you know, unless, right, right. unless you're really bundled up. But, um, you know, you've really talked about how your communication efforts, your use of social media, you know, the way that you're reaching out has really helped shift the culture. And so how do you do that? And, and how do you kind of know that that's happening? Well, Seguin had a, has a history of like having a negative culture. And you know, there, you know how you can always have a few people that have just a negative connotation about the school district and you know what goes on in the school districts and what they're not satisfied with. And we decided to really concentrate on the positive elements in our school district. And when you really look at the big picture, there are more positive elements than there are negative going on in our school district for sure. But nobody knew about some of those things. They're not as celebrated. So we really made a huge effort to celebrate and make sure that we show up at events when kids are doing positive things, our staff members are doing positive things. And we also make sure that we highlight our alumni. That's our, our product. And we wanted to make sure that people knew um, that we have alumni all around the world. We had a Pulitzer Prize winner. I mean, we had huge things coming out of the school district, but nobody would ever know if we didn't talk about it. So I wanted to make an effort to really highlight the positive, whether it was happening now or it was something that was coming or somebody that has graduated singing high school and they, they're out there in the world doing amazing things. We want to make sure that all those things are highlighted. Even after our students graduate, we make sure that we follow them we make sure that they have information to reach out to us when something big happens in their lives. We have a platform that we call Next Level Matador. Our mascot is the Matador at the high school. So we call it Next Level Matador. And when our students graduate secondary school or they they make a big leap in the, in the military branch or they do something amazing, we say, send it to us, send us a picture, let's highlight it. You know, let's tell the community what great things you're doing. And it really started to change the culture because now people want to see what our students are doing, what our current students are doing, what our alumni are doing. And it's just a group effort for the whole community to come together and highlight all the positive things that are happening. And before we didn't get a, you know, a big pool where people would tell us stuff. And now, you know, people are like, hey, my grandkid just graduated college and you know, she's gonna be a doctor. Look at this, take this picture, you know. And so we get all those feedback moments from people in the community too. And that's that's just a great feeling that everybody can see all the positive things that are coming out of our school district and things that we're doing now. Parade, right? You guys just really started putting it all out there. And then it sounds like it almost feeds itself because there's so much it does. Great stuff. People watching see, oh my gosh, I've got something great to contribute. And does that get emailed to you or how do they know how where to send that? We have an email address and it's just simply social media at and then our, our district address and people will send it in. But we also put a post out on social every once in a while. We'll say, hey, what's your great news? Send it to us, you know, and send it to this address. And we start getting all kind of stuff at the end of uh, the semesters. Like when we know college graduations are happening, we'll send out a message, say, hey, have you graduated, you know, a new school or secondary school? Send us your information. You know, we just we make sure we put them up. We put one up like every day. I think uh, last year in May, we had like 36 graduates sent something in like at one time. So we had to schedule them out and then we just kept getting them. We post all of them. We post every single one that we get because that's that's important that those kids are still connected with our school district where they came from, you know, and that's that's a big alumni pool for us. Right. Well, in some cases, I think you know, I kind of say you can break Facebook by posting almost too much. I know you post a ton. How do you keep up with well, uh, with everything? We we are heavy hitter poster. Um, we we have so much information all the time. Um, I start our schedule. We have a motivational post every morning, six a.m., and then after that, we post every odd hour of the day. So that's our schedule. Every odd hour we post, and then if during the day, if something important comes in and we just have to get it in during the day, we stick it in between in the even hours. And that's how we lay out our schedule. So when we schedule ahead, you know, we use a uh, Goropulse to schedule our stuff and we post those even uh, odd hours every day. That's how my schedule is. But then we're constantly getting fed stuff. So we'll stick them in in between. And that's just how we maintain that schedule. Okay. 
So do you post everything on all of the platforms or do you pick and choose what you decide, what stories you share where? We pick and choose. If there's something like if we have an early dismissal or there's something that's pertinent to all campuses, then we post on all the campuses and I have access to do so. You know, I post on every campus at the same time. But um, for the most part, we allow the campuses to post their good news. But if, you know, when we have really, when they show really cute pictures and, you know, it's just something that's like, that's an amazing story, we want everybody to see it, then I'll pull it and post it for everybody to see on the district pages. Okay. And you, you're you able to get content from staff and students and, and your community. You, you kind of shared you've got that email address. Now, when it comes from getting, uh, to getting content from the schools, are mm -hmm. you watching their pages or do they help feed you important stories so you make sure you don't miss something if it's happening on their own social media pages for the school? I watch their pages and uh, we also use TweetDeck where we watch, you know, all the Twitter pages. We have them all listed all on one page, okay. but we also encourage them to always tag the district. Every post they make, tag the district. And then that way, you know, it comes to us and we see it. So that's a lot of, of how we get fed uh, information because you know, I'll say it a million times a day, tag the district, tag the district. I tell everybody that they get sick of me. I need a t-shirt that says like, tag the district <laughs> so people can remember because I say it all the time. Right. And then you can decide whether you just like on Twitter, you can retweet it. But if it's a, yes. if it's a big enough story, you may pull that over to Facebook and, and share right. it on your main page as well. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. So um, you, you're telling a lot of great stories. I love that you shared your alumni, um, you know, and how you're the, the next level matadors and what they're doing. I think that's so critical. What are some of the other social media stories or features that you're most proud of that you've worked on over the last couple of years? We like to highlight um, a, a teacher of the month. You know, yeah. we, the schools send us um, highlights about teachers. And for a while we had enough to do like, a teacher of the week. But, um, you know, when school starts, it kind of slows down because everybody's so busy, but we're trying to build back up to where we have one every week. Um, I also like, uh, we have an early college high school program at our high school and we, we highlight those students. Um, and, you know, they can leave the high school with an associate's degree. So a lot of those students come back and tell their stories, like, what are they doing? They're in school and this is how this worked. And it encourages some of our young students to sign up for that program when they get to the high school. Um, we like those and we like the where are they nows with our alumni, you know, what are they what are they doing now? And especially like um, we have African-American History Month, Hispanic Heritage Month is this month. We try and highlight people that have come through our school system that are, you know, actually out in the world doing stuff. So those are fun too, those are fun projects. And then we have um, the throwbacks. We love the throwbacks. Like I said, our community is very historical um, high school's been around for a long time. So every once in a while, we'll see an old picture or we'll dig up something old in a yearbook and people love those posts, you know, and they, they share memories about what they remember about that time or, you know, they see somebody that they're related to and they send us pictures. So that's that's fun to do too. Yeah, awesome. And then you recently, last year, you kind of played around a little bit with the green screen with some of your athletes. And yeah, did, did a nice feature there, and you you've got some advanced, uh, you know, video editing and obviously graphic skills with your background. But can you just explain a little bit about what you guys chose to do and how you use that um, those videos? It started with our soccer team. We wanted to highlight those kids because the football team always gets a big play, and the volleyball team in the fall sports. But then when soccer starts, you know, they kind of lose the momentum for athletics. So we decided to. Um, Put our, we, our, our school district has one of the largest jumbotrons in the state for high school sports, right? So that's a big thing. And it's it's huge. It's massive. So anything that you put on jumbotron gets a lot of play. So I asked the guys to stand in front of a green screen, give us like 10 seconds of movement. We had our journalism kids film it for us. And um, then I took the green screen shots and I dropped in like a gold background. Our colors are black and gold. And we put some music over it and put their names in front of it. And it was just a huge thing. And it was meant for the Jumbotron, but we ran it on social media and it, it played out really big. So now everybody wants, you know, all sports want a green screen video. So that's kind of like the thing right now for introducing athletes and when they name their teams. So it's fun though. And the kids have fun doing it. Yeah. And it looks like it's like Monday Night Football or something, you know, right. college 
college level and you're doing it for your high school students. So that's cool. We'll link up to that example of that video and you can do it in, you know, normal uh, video editing software where you can kind of remove the, the background, um, remove that green yeah. screen. Canva, Canva has even added in one of their new additions, Canva has like a video where you can remove the background. So I'm, I haven't played with it yet, but I'm pretty sure that that'll work on Canva now. So oh. that's exciting. Yes, that is. My listeners know Canva. You yeah. mentioned a couple other um, uh, tools that you use, TweetDeck. TweetDeck free? TweetDeck, so it's like Twitter, but you can add like hashtags that you want to watch. You can add um, profiles that you want to watch, and they're like, they appear all across the screen, and you can scroll through them. So it's like right. if you have 12 schools, you can put all 12 schools' names, and then you can see, you can monitor all those schools at the same time on the same page. So that's kind is of there cool. a small. Is there a small fee for that? No, TweetDeck is free. Okay, TweetDeck's free. So that's awesome. So you guys should it's check an that awesome out. Tool. Awesome Agora tool. Pulse is charged. It's kind of like a Sprout yes. Social or a Hootsuite or a Buffer. Right. Um, but yes. actually, Agora Pulse is what um, my uh, uh, marketing gal uses for my business because you can, we didn't mention LinkedIn. But Agora Pulse also allows you to schedule to LinkedIn as well. Yes, which, we have LinkedIn too. Okay, which I just heard that LinkedIn is looking at incorporating a native scheduling tool into its platform, finally. Um, right. Anyways, um, okay, this is good. Uh, our listeners are getting a lot out of this. So when it comes to social media, um, you're doing a ton. What's your biggest struggle? logging off <laughs> it's it's my biggest struggle is finding time for myself for my family um i'm a student as well um it's it's hard because i'm always on the screen and it's you know it's i'm always on the phone or i'm on the screen and and sometimes i have to turn it off just for my own sanity and <laughs> and rest but it's it's hard when you're doing social media because you always want to look to make sure everything is okay and there aren't any crazy comments on your profile. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a social media doesn't sleep. I tell people that all the time. So neither do I. And it's, that's the hard part is knowing how to balance and how to have healthy family time and yeah, spend time with the people that you love. Do you have anything that's helped you with that, with managing that? I have times where I turn it off. Like after seven o'clock, I'm, I'm not, I'm not looking at it and it's, it's yeah. turned off and, and people know that. And if uh, the people that need to reach me, I have two phones. And if I really need to be reached, then they know that they can reach me on that, the phone that I'm going to answer because I'm not going to answer the other one after a certain hour. Okay. So it took me yeah. a long time to get that, but man, it's it's so much better. And I, I enjoy it so much better. I love my job, but I love it even more that um, I can relax and not be stressed out all the time about right. the job. And and my, uh, my boss and the superintendent are really supportive about you know, taking family time and yeah. taking care of yourself. Self-care is important. Yeah, I know that all my listeners can relate to that. Now, I mentioned before, you're, men, uh, you're a member of our Social School for EDU membership program. Um, Tanisha, how would you say that program helps you in your role with your, you know, school, school district? It's awesome. You get to talk to and communicate with people that do the same thing that you do. And it's, it's different when they have ideas that work or you can contribute to some of their ideas and come up with something great. And it's just an endless resource for ideas. If you're looking for something specific, guaranteed you can go on the Facebook group and you can probably find what you're looking for. So it's, it's something I tell them every year when we start talking about the budget. I'm like, yeah, remember, don't, don't forget that. You gotta have that. So it's, it's been a you know, tremendous resource for me um, just when I'm stuck or I need a new idea, I can always find it. I can always find somebody to lend a helping hand in the group. So that's that's just been fantastic. I love that. Yeah, and it's filled with awesome people like you. So that's what's uh, colorful. Um, you mentioned just briefly that you are also a student. So yes. you are going for, a, is it a doctorate? Yes, I'm working on my doctorate in strategic communications. And it's been so interesting finding out um, you know, how people communicate, like there's an art to communication and, you know, people are in our field are, are doing it every day and it's, it's changing every day. And it's just amazing how it changes. And 
I'm, I'm having a fun time learning all the tools and, and tricks behind it. Yeah, and your um, dissertation or your kind of capstone project is surround social media, is that right? Yes, I'm, I'm looking into how we communicate with um, all of our stakeholders, like in the school district, we communicate with parents and grandparents in the community and students and staff. And sometimes each one of those audiences needs a different type of communication. So how do we communicate effectively with all of those groups without you know burning ourselves out or spinning our wheels and each each group needs a different message so you know that's that's important definitely oh my goodness um well congratulations on all of that plus everything plus you've got a family so um as we wrap up today what would you say is your best social media tip my best tip is to understand your audience your students will take a message one way and they need one kind of communication where your parent might need a different one and your staff needs a different one. So for instance, we use Instagram primarily to connect with our students because that's where they are. That's where they respond to us. The community and parents um, respond to us on Facebook and our staff members love Twitter. So we, you know, when we have a message for them, we send it out to them. And sometimes we send out the same message in three different ways, you know, and sometimes it takes that to effectively communicate. But if you understand your audience, and you understand the trends that they're into and what they like and what they notice, then you can communicate effectively with them. Yeah. That sounds like it's straight out of your, your little thesis. I mean, it is. I do it every day and it's, it's great. I'm learning about, I mean, it's really helping me hone my craft. So I, yeah. I'm loving it. Absolutely. Um, so if people want to stay connected to you, Tanisha, what would be the best way? I'm on Facebook, Tanisha D. Hearn and um, email. I'm at thern at seguin, S-E-G-U-I-N dot T-X dot U-S. Okay. We will get both of those in the show notes. And so if people have more questions about anything that you talked about today, you can reach out directly to Tanisha. You can also sure. hang out with her a little bit more. If you join our membership group, we are open and, and ready and excited to welcome new school. So you need it. Do it. <laughs> awesome well thanks so much for hanging out with us today tanisha um everybody no we will see you again next week with another fabulous guest till next time keep telling those stories bye-bye bye-bye